Shut up, compressor. Hey everyone, Matt here with Duke's Models, and welcome to episode 10 of the P38F build. In episode 9, I spent a lot of time, a lot more time than I really anticipated, getting a lot of the smaller bits kind of ready and into the weathering stage. And as a result, there was a lot of jumping around from exhaust to tires and props and things like that. And it just started feeling really disjointed to me. So I decided to go ahead and cut that one short before the oil work began. And what you're seeing on the bench right here is actually a bit ahead of where we're going to jump back in time to to pick up. So right now, oils are kind of going on in their first layer, essentially getting the tonal variation and things like that down before I start adding things like streaks and maybe some dust here and there. And so let's go ahead and jump into the start of the oils. And after that, we'll pick up with where things are in their current state and move on to some of the underside work here before swinging back around to the top and basically focusing on this central cockpit nacelle and inner wing situation which haven't really been touched yet. Okay, now it is time to start work on the oils. And I'm going to start with the roundel here, which I want to do a little tiny bit of fading to. This is some ABT 502 faded white. Jump to a little bit thinner. Basically what I'm doing is adding some light faded white and dust tones and then coming back into some olive green and some yellow ochre to kind of restore the tonality a bit and make things look interesting. I'm going to go with a bit of a darker olive green along the outer edge of the aileron here.
Okay, so here we are on the underside of the P38 for a change. And on the underside, instead of going with oils, I have been going with some guns, Mr. Weathering Color. Now, the way that I'm approaching this is different from the way that I normally do oils. And a big part of that is because it's just got a different consistency, and so it needs to be treated a little bit differently. So first, get a decent amount on the brush, and then kind of dab a little bit of it off on a paper towel, because there will still be a shocking amount that sticks around. And then, just kind of dab, dab, dab. Just get it on there, essentially. Switch over to a different dryer brush, a little bit bigger. Kind of get this stuff moving. Now, Mr. Weathering Color is a enamel weathering product, so it's not entirely unlike stuff you might see from ammo, AK, whatever, but the pigments are a little bit grainier, and so it has a little bit more body to it in some ways. In some ways, it's a lot thinner. And what that gets you is when it dries, you get a very good sort of ground-in dust type of effect. And I also on the underside, I'm not just going to be using this brown-gray color. This is basically a starting point. Now get a little bit of Mr. Weathering Color Thinner, which is... I'm not exactly sure what this stuff is, but... Behavior-wise, it strikes me as sort of a 50-50 of... Low Odor Mineral Spirits and Naphtha. It's got a faster drying time than your regular run-of-the-mill mineral spirits, but it definitely cooks off faster, but it doesn't quite cook off as fast as naphtha does. So it gives you a kind of middle ground of those two effects. Deerfoot Stippler is, again, an MVP in this underside weathering process. There's going to be a key difference in how I treat the insignia versus how I treat everything else, and we'll get to that in just a second. For now, it kind of does the same thing. I found I do like getting this stuff nice and wet with the thinner kind of helps get it into a bit more of a randomized type thing. As it dries, you can do some additional stippling, and if you just, you know, kind of push and sweep a little bit, you can almost, I'm not going to call it chipping, but you can shift things around to expose some less covered areas, create just some interesting variation. I'm trying to do that here along the wing, leading edge. Next we're going to move into our second color, which is multi-gray. This is the reason I'm using this shit on the bottom, because they make a fantastic multi-gray that can basically help us out with blending. So on top of the brown gray, we just come in, dab this shit around. Except I'm going to avoid star at the moment. And then basically we just rinse and repeat what we've been doing. And this multi-gray really helps it sort of settle with the neutral gray that we've got going down on the bottom here. Keeps the dust from being too overpowering. It makes it all balance out quite nicely. Then as it dries, you can use the Deerfoot Stippler to break up the worst of the tide marks that may or may not form.
we basically start getting a really interesting thing going on with the wings. Now the last thing I'm going to do in terms of this stuff right now on this wing is add a little bit of their multi-white to the proceedings. And for this I'm going to get a much, much smaller brush. We don't need a whole lot. And then basically take a similar approach. Brush with a bit of thinner on it. Okay, so the lower surfaces are looking nice and appropriately dusted up. Still want to come back and do some more to them, but I think for a good base, this is sufficient. So now, swing back over to the upper side, and we're going to focus on essentially the center wing portion here, the fronts of the nacelles, the nose, all that good stuff. And for this, I've mixed up a new little palette of oils here. This is a mix of Windsor & Newton and ABT 502 things. So just to run through the list again, Faded White, Light Mud, both ABT 502, Starship Filth, more ABT 502, Sepia, and then I've got some Windsor & Newton Olive Green and some Windsor & Newton Yellow Ochre. Man, these poor brushes are uh, having the time of their life dealing with the oils and the stippling work. It is uh, definitely hard on <laughs> pretty much any brushes. So for this, I try to use shitty ones, like this micro mini whatever. I think I got like 20 of them on Amazon. So if they do fall to shit, I'm not out too much. Okay, so now that I've got the faded white and the light mud down, Time to move into some yellow ochre and some olive green. Kind of get away from some of this pastiness that's going on. Let's brush it nice and wet with thinner and just slop these guys around. already tell I'm probably going to have to do a subsequent pass after I clear this with some additional panel lining just to restore some of that contrast in those things because we've got them turning white in here. I might come back and re-sand a little bit of this area too just to get the rivets back. We'll see. It'll be fun. If this looks nasty right now, it is supposed to very much so.
All right, let me knock out the ochre on the rest of the center area, and we'll be back with the olive green and sepia and things like that. Okay, so now that the faded white, light mud, and yellow ochre are down, we've got a pretty nice battered looking center section of the P38 here. Now it's time to move into the darker colors, the olive green, the sepia, and I've gone ahead and added a little bit of raw umber into the equation as well. And these are basically to bring some of that darkness and dirtiness back. Because this olive drab is a dark olive drab. So now that I've blended in the first layer, I'm going in adding more. And kind of blending it in on top. Getting that varied finish going on. Okay, so now that I've got the olive green down, it's time to start getting things nice and dirty with some sepia, some raw umber, and some starship filth. Now a part of this is getting some randomness, a part of it is also shifting some of the green towards more of a brown, as we can see back here on the boom scoops. So basically trying to balance where these happen. And part of that is already determined by the painting underneath, but we can still curve the shot with oils. Now, one thing that's really tough to account for and capture in video is sort of the spontaneity that happens with this kind of oil work, where we go through and we see spots that's like, oh, that needs a bit more interest and a bit more variation. And so I'm basically looking for parts where it makes sense more from an aesthetic standpoint than from you know, a technical or accuracy standpoint to go in and basically beef up the brown values.
Okay, now on the upper surfaces, I am doing a little bit of restoration of the cowl panel lines. And for this, I basically have a little mix of some Starship filth and sepia thinned down, and I'm hitting it with some Mr. Weathering thinner to get a nice little mix. And basically, all I'm doing is very carefully, well, maybe not so very carefully, touching down and getting it to capillary around to the panel lines that got covered up by the various oils. Why am I making these so much darker? Well, they're cowl panels, they come off. The darkness is representing essentially the gaps between these different panels. Because if you've ever been up close and personal with a World War II aircraft, they're not the F-35. The precision of the panel fits can be a bit wonky, and so... Literally representing some of that daylight that happens with a darker panel on the wash. Cool, that's looking pretty sharp. Okay, so I needed to ungloss another project, and while I had the flat coat out, I decided to go ahead and do a final treatment to the clear parts and then unmask them. And the side window and the side hinging top of the canopy went off without a hitch. Unfortunately, the rolled down side window, less so. And I was left with a gap between the nose step and where the transparency actually begins that shouldn't be clear, but is. So I've masked that off. And now we're gonna do a quick repair process. And because there's a no step decal on the top of this thing, I've had to be a little bit careful in terms of masking. So this upper portion here is actually post-it note, which is freaking me out a little bit because post-it notes have a tendency to fail very quickly. All right, so that's some interior green. Since we're trying to move fast here, I'm now going to move on to some 6K brown, like I've been using for the rest of the P38. This will provide a nice dark oomph to things and provide a good base for the olive drab. Next up, it's time for some olive drab. And now it's time for a quick shot of flat clear to deaden things out. Let's go ahead and remove the post-it and hope that it doesn't take any of the decal away with it. There we go. Nice, happy no step. Okay. We're going to let that sit, and I'm going to move on to doing some unglossing work on the P38. I've already done some, and I kind of want to keep pressing forward. So I've already gone ahead and done the wings and the booms. And you can kind of see the difference like right here between the forward cowl and the aft cowl panels where the specularity of the light reflection completely falls off. So that is basically what the unglossing is looking like.
And my reason for this is twofold. First, this thing needs a flat coat before we can call it a day. Second, I want to be able to pick it up and move it around and having the oils on the surface definitely creates a obstacle that I would need to overcome. So by getting this thing nice and flat coated, I'm also making it handleable again. Okay, now I'm moving around to unglossing the lower surfaces. Ta-da! Flat coated P38. Okay, so I've removed most of the liquid frisket from the canopy. Now I am removing the actual masks. Always one of the most satisfying parts of a build. Blink. Okay, that's pretty cool looking. Let's go ahead and bring in the other side. Ta-da! So there is the glass installed. That's looking pretty damn good. Okay, so now that the P38 has its flat coat on, it's time to add the final decals. These are the mirrors that go on the inside of the nacelles so the pilot can check on landing gear. I have this upside down because I think it's a little bit easier of a working angle. Fortunately, I don't have to worry too much about where these are going and how they'll conform to panel lines and that kind of thing, because where they're going, there really aren't any. Next up, I want to see if I can take the wheels a bit further. So far, there's been a lot done to them, but they still just kind of look brown and brown. And when they're underneath the aircraft, they just completely vanish. And so I am going to go ahead and add some dust to these. And for this, I'm using a bottle of Ammo's Light Dust Nature Effects, which has seen better days. But it is still useful for this type of thing. Basically, get the brush nice and sloppy wet, spread it on a sponge, this is actually packing foam but I just call it a sponge, same difference, dab most of it off, pick up 
take the wheel and then we'll just sponge it on. Now the reason I'm using enamel for this as opposed to oils is oils tend to lose opacity when you're doing this and they also take forever to dry. These enamels have a bit more staying power so we can maintain that contrast. We also get some cool little speckling on the inside, on the sidewalls there. I think I need a little bit more to finish that off. Okay, so that's got some more body to it. Let's kick that out of the way. Do the nose wheel as well. The nose wheel should look pretty cool because these uh, block treads seem to hold patterns better than the diamond tread on kit tires. Okay. Cool. Okay, next up I want to add some shit around the sidewalls. And for this one we're using some Oil brusher grime and oil brusher dark brown. Okay, continuing the prop blade adventures, here is where things have ended up after letting the sandy wash dry overnight. And it looks nice and warm, but it also is a little bit too prominent. So to dial this back, I'm going to bring in some Mr. Weathering Color Multi-Black. Just kind of do the same thing we were doing with the sandy wash. Just kind of dot it around on the blade. Bring in the Deerfoot Stippler. And just do that. And at least looking in my monitor, it looks a whole lot darker than it really is, because the Sandy Watch has left this I'd say rather lighter than I would maybe care for. So this is all about trying to bring this back to mostly looking black, but also still looking like it's been through some shit. looking pretty solid. Okay, so now it's time to get on with a bit of fluid staining, and for this I'm using Liquitex Acrylic Black Ink and Acrylic Burnt Umber Ink mixed with some Tamiya X20A. I find this stuff seems to work a bit better for this sort of like stained look, as you see right in here, for example. And so I just want to kind of continue that in a few different places. Is a little bit different from streaks. Let's 
these are just getting like that little seepage around panel lines and things like that going on. I'm going to add a little bit up here around where I've already got some oils going on the nose. These are going to be sort of reinforcing effects. I have to remember this shit if I ever do a uh, Greek A7 or something like that because I think you can get to sort of like stained look a lot easier with these inks than you can with oils. So that's looking pretty solid. Okay, so before moving on to the final step of the exhaust streaks coming off the turbochargers, looking at reference photos, there's a bit of smuts and grime and darker fluids on this inner radiator scoop, kind of along the top and then running along the sides, etc. It's a bit of a pain in the ass location to deal with, but I want to see what we can do. So for this I'll be using Starship Filth. not an easy location to work in, it's frustrating. I'm going to remove the canopy so I'm not going to knock it around. Biggest problem with this P38 is the airframe shape makes it really tough to maneuver around and get some fine work done. Right. That looks pretty damn cool.
Okay, so I'm going to let that sit for a few minutes, get this other side done. Then I'm hoping we can come in and start working on the exhaust. Okay, so now that I've added the fluid streaking to the interior radiator scoops, I've pretty much reached the end of the oil work on the P38, and it seems like a good time to go ahead and draw this installment to a close. So when we pick up with the final installment, it'll basically be working through the last step of the build, which is going to be adding the turbocharger exhaust staining, coming off the turbos across the top of the boom, extending a little bit to the tail, etc. And basically knocking that out, finishing the build, and then doing a quick sort of retrospective of major steps, what I like, what I don't like, lessons I can learn for the future, lessons I learned on this build, and that sort of a thing. So be sure to stick around for that. It's always fun to come into the final videos and kind of wrap everything up and put a nice bow on a project. So thanks for watching this one. Keep an eye out for the next one, and I will catch you all later.